In this tutorial, we're going to be going over how to create x-ray vision in Unity. In our example, we have a simple little scene with a monkey statue in the other room, and we want to be able to see it through the wall. Now, if this is all we wanted to do, it would be super easy. All you have to do is create a new camera, switch it to depth only, and then under depth, change that to one. After that, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer, and we'll call it x-ray. And then going back to our new camera, we're going to go to the calling mask, and we're going to change it to nothing and then to x-ray. That's just so we don't have to turn all the others off by hand. Then we're going to go to our monkey statue and we're going to change its layer to x-ray. And then bam, there you go. Technically speaking, that's all you need to do to have x-ray vision. Thank you so much for watching. No, I'm just joking. We're actually going to want a visual representation of when we can see objects through other objects. We're going to do this by swapping materials at runtime. So we're going to create a new material. We're going to call it x-ray, put it on our monkey so we can preview what it'll look like. And I'm just going to go ahead and make it red. I'm going to turn on emission and I'm going to make it glow red as well. Okay, so now any object we can use our x-ray vision on will have a distinct appearance from anything else in the scene. If we really want to drive that point home, we can even add a little particle system onto our monkey. Making particles isn't part of the tutorial, so I'm just going to speed through this and give it sort of a Skyrim Detect Life look. Okay, I think that looks good. So we're going to go back, we're going to change our statue back into its original material, create a new script, and we'll just call it x-ray. We're going to go ahead and put it on our monkey. Now let's open that up in Visual Studio. Once that's up and running, the first thing that we're going to do above our start method is make a mesh render variable, call it mesh render with a lowercase m. In our start function, we're going to say mesh render is equal to get component mesh render. We're going to create a new variable. We're going to call it material base material. And we're going to make base material equal to mesh renderer dot material. Then we're going to go back up and make one more variable. This one's going to be public material and we're going to call it x-ray material. Then we're going to go into our update function and we're going to make a raycast hit, call it hit. This will just make it so if the object is behind something, x-ray will be turned on. Then we'll say if physics.raycast and we'll feed it the parameter of transform.position, comma camera.main.transform.position, and we're going to say minus transform.position, comma out hit. Then inside of the curly brackets, we'll say if hit.collider.compare tag player is equal to false. Then we're going to make the mesh render dot material equal to x-ray material. Then say else mesh render dot material is equal to base material. We'll go ahead and save that. Go back into our game. We'll drag and drop in our x-ray material. We'll make sure our player's tag is set to player. And then let's test this out. It works fine. Now there's a few problems that we have. Firstly, the x-ray isn't actually being turned off when we can see it. The material is just being swapped and we can't see our particle system. Let's go back into Visual Studio and fix that. The first thing that we're going to do is go up to the top and say using unity engine dot events. And then we'll create two new unity event variables and we'll name them on x-ray and off x-ray. And we'll go into our if statement and we'll say on x-ray dot invoke. And in our else statement, we'll say off x-ray dot invoke. In order to turn off our x-ray when we're not using it, we'll create a new int variable and we'll name it base layer. I'm going to go ahead and put that under base material. We're going to say base layer is equal to game object dot layer. And then in the first part of our if statement, we're going to say game object dot layer is equal to eight, which is the correlating number for our x-ray layer. Then in the else statement, we're going to say game object dot layer is equal to base layer. That way our x-ray camera will no longer work on this object if it's not behind something. Let's save that and head back to our editor. Unity events work the same way that UI buttons do. So we can just click the plus button, drag and drop in our particle system, and then under the drop down, click game object and go to set active bool and then just check it. And then we'll do the same thing in reverse for off x-ray. This will effectively activate it when the x-ray is on and deactivate it when the x-ray is off. Now the x-ray's game object layer is gonna be handled by script. So we're gonna to wanna to set it back to default. And since we have a particle system that we only want to be seen when the x-ray is on, we're gonna to have to set that game object's layer to x-ray as well. Without further ado, let's go ahead and test this out in play mode. And there you go, that works great. But we also want to be able to use this on characters. Characters normally have more than one material. On top of that, they use a skin mesh renderer as opposed to a normal mesh renderer. Now we already have a character that we download from Meximo. We'll go ahead and drag that into our scene and adjust its transform. And if I go into the game object with a skin mesh renderer, you'll see that it does have two materials. So we'll go into our scripts folder, we'll create a new c -sharp script, and we'll call it x-ray character. And then we'll drag and drop that script on to our skin mesh renderer game object. As opposed to rewriting the entire code, let's open this up in Visual Studio, and then we'll just copy and paste the other script onto this one. Control A is how you copy everything. The first thing that we're gonna to need to fix is the class name. We're gonna change it to x-ray character, or whatever you name the script in your project. 
Next, we'll change all the mesh renderers to skinned mesh renderers. Save that, head back into our project, drag and drop in our X-ray material in the X-ray material slot, and test this out in play mode. And then you'll see that we have a huge glaring problem. The X-ray material only works for the first material on the skin mesh renderer. To fix that, we'll go back into Visual Studio. We'll change our base material to be an array by adding square brackets. Then in our start function, as opposed to saying base material equals mesh renderer dot material, we'll make it base material is equal to mesh render dot materials. And then we'll do the same thing for the else statement. And just so this doesn't confuse me later, I'm going to add an S at the end of the base material variable. And in order for this to work, we're going to need to add in a new variable, and it's going to be a list of materials, and we're going to call it x-ray materials. Then in our start function, we're going to say x-ray materials is equal to new list, and we're going to say materials, and then in our curly brackets, we're going to say x-ray material. And that's to make sure there's always at least one material in our list. And then in our if statement, we're going to say mesh materials is equal to x-ray materials dot to array. I know this is a lot, but there's still a little bit more to do. We're going to need a for loop. As usual, I'm too lazy to memorize this, so I just take it off the internet. Once you've done that, change whatever you have after the less than sign to base materials dot length minus one. I'll show you why we added the minus one in a second. And then in our for loop, we're going to say x-ray materials dot add, and we're going to feed it x-ray material. The reason we added that minus one is because we already have an object inside of our x materials list. And we always want our x-ray materials to be equal in amount to our base materials. And that should be it, so let's go and test this out. And there you go. Now no matter how many materials you have on your character, it'll always be able to have a proper x-ray. That's great, but what if we want to trigger the x-ray and actually see a skeleton like the Batman games? To do that, open up Visual Studio, type if input dot get key down, parentheses key code dot x for x-ray. Go back up to the top, create a new variable, and it's just going to be bool, and we'll call it x-ray on. Then in our new if statement, we're going to say x-ray on is equal to explanation point x-ray on. We'll just make it equal to the opposite of whatever it currently is. In other words, it's a toggle. And then beneath that, we're going to say if x-ray on is not equal to true, we'll go down into our else statement and we'll copy and paste that into this new if statement. And beneath that if statement, we're going to make an else statement and we'll copy and paste the first part of the latter if statement into the else statement. If that's confusing, just copy the screen. After that, you can go ahead and delete all the raycast stuff, save that, and let's go back into our project. Now we're going to need a skeleton for our character here. I got this character from Mixamo, like I said earlier, and I've always felt like this guy looks a lot like an armorless version of this alien. So we're going to use him. Go ahead and download that and bring him into our project. Make sure when you download him, it's an FBX for Unity. Click on the prefab, and then under the materials section, we're going to want to click this extract textures button, and that's just so he isn't gray. Then you'll get this little pop-up. Just click fix now. Go ahead and drag and drop that into our scene. Make it a child object of our other alien. Let's just match them up in height and size. You can get super specific, but we're just going to leave it at this. By default, we're going to want our skeleton character turned off. Then, just like our particle system for our monkey, we're going to turn on this character whenever the x-ray is on and turn it off whenever the x-ray is off. Once that's done, let's go into our materials folder and we're going to duplicate our old x-ray material, call it x-ray2. We're going to make this one a blue color, make it glow blue as well, just for a little bit of diversity and we'll drag and drop this onto our new character. We only want to see this character whenever X-ray is on, so we don't need to worry about default materials. Double check and make sure your skeleton is set to the layer of X-ray, and we should be ready to go. This is great, but I want to add a little bit more and make the entire view look a bit different whenever X-ray is on. So let's go a little bit further into the never-ending pit of adding additional features and set up post-processing. So let's go to Window, Package Manager, and then we'll look up post-processing. Once you find it, go ahead and click install. And then on our x-ray camera, we're going to add in the component of post-processing layer. We'll go up to layers and we'll add in a new layer. And we're just going to call this one volume. And then we'll change our camera's layer to volume. Heading back into our camera, let's go to our post-processing layer component. And then for the layer dropdown, select volume. Then we're going to create a new game object and we'll give it the post-process volume component and then click is global. And for profile, we're going to click the new button and then go ahead and add effects as you please. We want ours to look like the Batman games. So we're going to add in a lens distortion. And as you can see, as we mess around with it, nothing's happening. And that's because we need to set this layer to volume as well. 
and now it should work. We're actually going to make our intensity on the negative side because we want it to fishbowl out as opposed to in. Then we're going to add in a color grading effect and we're going to turn on post exposure, mess with that a bit. And then for our color filter, we're going to make it blue. Once again, we want this game object to be turned off by default. And that should be it. Now what we could do is go into our character and make this so it turns off and on whenever the x-ray is on or off. But then a lot of game objects would be calling to the same thing if you had a lot of x-ray game objects in your game. So we're going to create one final script and we're going to call it x-ray vision. And it's pretty much going to be a unity event script. So we'll go up to the top and we'll say using unity engine dot events. And then we're going to make two variables and they're going to be public unity events and it's going to be on x-ray and off x-ray. As you can tell, this is pretty much going to be the same exact thing as parts of our other script. So we're going to go into our update function and we're going to say if input dot get key down parentheses key code dot x. And before we fill the curly brackets, we're going to need to go up top and we're going to need to create a new bowl and we're going to call it x-ray on. And then inside of the parentheses, we're going to say x-ray on is equal to explanation point x-ray on. Beneath that, if x-ray on is not equal to true, then off x-ray dot invoke, else on x-ray dot invoke. This is one of the few times where repeating code like this is actually perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and save this and head back into the editor. And for safekeeping, let's go ahead and grab our volume game object to make it a child of our player. After that, let's go ahead and add our new script to our player. And just like the skeleton and particle effect, we're going to drag in our new game object onto the on x-ray and then turn it on if x-ray is on and then turn it off if x-ray is off. The reason we're using unity events like this is so you can add as many things and craziness to happen when the x-ray is on as you like. Go ahead and test that out. And it looks good. It's not exactly the same as the Batman games, but it looks pretty close. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. We try to answer as many as we can, and we'll see you next time.